On-farm composting is both cost-effective and environmentally safe, and it protects public health and herd health. Um, so we consider it to be a best management practice. I've been composting my mortalities now for probably 10 or 12 years. Uh, began purely by the need for it, uh, in that they started charging me $50 a head to come and pick them up, and I was a little adverse to that. So I had a compost pile going, and I just opened up the compost pile and stuck a cow that had died from bloat in there and covered her back up. And when I spread the manure, she wasn't there anymore. Or when I spread the compost, she was gone, except for a few of the more hardy bones that remain. And that was kind of the beginning of my experience with composting mortality. Since then, I haven't shipped any. They've all gone into a compost pile. If you've got any carcasses to dispose of, either it's going to cost you money to get rid of them off the farm or it's going to be kind of a uh, either an environmental hazard or you're going to have some critters around you don't want by just, just throwing them in the woods. Um, burying them is not getting any value out of that carcass for one thing and it's a lot of work to get her in the ground for another thing so it seems like it fits pretty well just to figure out a way to get your pile active enough to um, and composting correctly both for that pile itself and to get rid of your cow so it can work together pretty well. Once the composting process is complete no matter what's been put in there whether it's it's haylage, it's silage, it's old manure the animal itself. Once that composting process is complete, the heat and the microbes in there have decomposed it and basically treated the pathogens and the problems and turned it into a really rich soil amendment. And it's, it's the perfect thing to spread on land, particularly ag land. The farmer needs to be aware of choosing an appropriate place to, um, to have the compost pile or to set the compost pile up. And that place needs to be um, an area that's not subject to overland flow of water and preferably not in a low area that's subject to uh, periodic flooding or raising of the, ground, of the water table in the ground. When you're looking for a site on your farm to compost the livestock mortality, it's critical that you pay attention to a number of things. The primary thing that we're concerned about is the pathogens and nutrients out of the animal and into surrounding water sources, wells, springs, and surface waters. Uh, there's something called the rule of twos that we often use that um, suggests that we should keep an animal 200 feet from surface waters, 200 feet from wells, two feet above seasonally high groundwater, and that these piles should be located in places where other animals will not be interacting with the pile. Uh, this can be done on the edge of a pasture where the animals can be fenced out of that area and or it can be done on a separate site. It's very important that we have sufficient depth to seasonal high water table, sufficient depth to uh, bedrock. We also have to make sure that we have uh, specific uh, setback locations away from neighbors, water supplies, wells, springs and bodies of water. Composting of mortalities on the farm can help deal, is actually a safe way to deal with potential problems, potential biosecurity problems. So spread of some of the diseases that might crop up on the farm if you do it correctly. And so what we mean by, by that is not just piling it in a manure pile, but, but um, building and maintaining a proper compost pile. If you do a proper compost pile, the heat in the compost pile will, be, will reach temperatures um, high enough to kill those um, pathogens. A good pile is going to start off with a base of at least two feet of material. 
and it should be a type of material that's going to allow any liquids to go down through the bottom and also to allow air to come up through. They talk about a chimney effect where air gets drawn in through the sides of the pile and then comes up out through the top. And so a, a wet, heavy manure uh, doesn't work well for this type of pile. It, a drier material works well, something a little looser that air is going to pass through. One of the key materials for composting these carcasses is wood chip, um, simply because it provides both carbon to the pile as well as dry matter, but almost most importantly, um, it creates porosity in the base of the pile and the surrounding pile to allow for air to come into the, into the mix. Other materials can be combined with the wood chip um, to achieve uh, different results, but also to um, just work with what's available. There's several ways to get that porosity and get that oxygen in. Uh, mixing a lot of different types of materials gets, makes a matrix or gives that poros porosity. So, so you're on the right track doing what you do already. Uh, adding in wood chips for people that maybe only have haylage on hand and their materials, or, or, uh, or if the only thing they had on was fine sawdust, that wouldn't let very much air in. So having wood chips, adding wood chips into the pile would help add to that porosity. Uh, but then, then the last thing I'd say is, is don't pack your materials. This is the opposite of packing a bunk. Uh, you want this to be fluffy and loose. So there's a tendency to sometimes want to mush all your cover materials around the carcass and make sure that the, the air, the odors can't get out. But really the best thing you can do is flick the bucket a little bit to shake out whatever you're covering your carcass with to, to leave it as fluffy as possible to let the air get in there and that will uh, allow for better biological activity. The critical piece for farmers is getting set up before they actually have an animal go down. If you're not set up and you have to go source something like wood chip once the animal's down that can be a challenge in doing it within a timely manner. Um, when that arises and a farmer's having a hard time finding wood chip, they tend to resort to their older practices out of convenience. So the biggest, biggest thing that we push with farms is for them to go into this before they have an animal go down and make proper plans to have wood chip on site and prepare an area where they'll be able to manage the carcass effectively. Well, the wood chips are delivered by local uh, tree services that, that have to dispose of their wood chips somewhere and whenever I go by one on the road I say bring them to my place. Uh, this particular pile came from the uh, snowstorm this spring that, uh, that the, the trees all got broke in the city and they had lots of it to get rid of and I spoke for it and they delivered. When you're composting mortalities, you're dealing with flesh that you're trying to make deteriorate and it draws varmints. You have raccoons, you have skunks, you have koi dogs, you have the neighbor's dogs, you have all kinds of animals that want to get in there. Uh, so there's a, sometimes if you don't get it buried up good, you get uh, an animal that is putting off an odor that attracts other animals and so uh, what you need to do is monitor it. You need to be looking at this pile of compost on a regular basis, especially when it's fresh, for the first few days to be sure that somebody hasn't dug in there and when they do, bring in some more compost, some wood chips or something to put on top of it so that the smell doesn't come. 